uh, we're going to look at a special case. And for this special case, um, uh, is going to be looking at the eigenvalues of a triangular matrix. Uh, if you recall, the determinant of a triangular matrix is just the product of the diagonal entries. Right? You could think of this as if you expand uh, cofactors along the bottom, you're going to have all zeros except for this one. So you'll have a, a and n times the determinant of that submatrix. And then you can expand that along the bottom and keep going. And what you'll end up with is that if you just find the diagonals, the determinant is going to be this times this times this uh, down to this diagonal entry right there. And this is going to be nice in terms of helping us figure out the eigenvalues of a diagonal matrix because we can then, uh, when we take c minus lambda i, it's going to this result's going to be a diagonal matrix if C is a diagonal matrix, and the determinant becomes easy to calculate. Right, so for example, suppose I wanted to find the eigenvalues of this matrix. If I want to take D minus lambda I, what am I going to get? I'm going to get 3 minus lambda, 0, 0, 0, 0. 8 minus 4 minus lambda 0 0 0 and here we have minus 1007 1 1.11 21.1 minus lambda 0 0 and I'm just going to leave these alone and then let's see those are going to be what 13 12 11 10 and then all the diagonal entries, I have to subtract the lambda. Now if I take the determinant of this, this is going to give me my characteristic polynomial. This is still a diagonal matrix, so the determinant of this matrix is going to be the product of the diagonals. If I want to find out the roots of this thing, so when is this thing equal to zero? Well, it's already factored, so I don't have to do any work. I just leave it like that. So this could be zero if lambda is three, or lambda equals minus four, or lambda equals 21.1, or lambda equals 3.66, or lambda equals nine. So if I have a diagonal matrix, I can just immediately look at this and say my eigenvalues are going to be on the diagonal because if I subtract lambdas from the diagonal and take the determinant, it's just going to be the product of those entries on the uh, diagonal. And when I want to know or find the roots of these, I can just find the place where each diagonal entry is going to give me zero. Right? And that's going to be exactly when lambda is a value on the diagonal. Okay. So if I take d minus lambda i, I, all I do is subtract lambda from the diagonals. If I take the determinant of that thing, I'm just going to take this times this times this times this times this. And if I set that equal to 0, I immediately get eigenvalues for 3 minus 4 21.1, 3.66, and 9. Okay. So if I ask you to find the eigenvalues of this matrix, you should be able to just look at this and say it's 3 minus 4, 21.1, 3.66, and 9. Be careful, that's a minus 4. So another interesting thing that we have is something called the trace. So if I have a matrix and I look at the diagonal entries, the trace is basically going to take the diagonal entries and just find the sum of the diagonal entries, just a definition. So if I have this matrix here, 
and I want to find the trace of this thing. So where are the diagonal entries? Are those entries there? So it's going to be 2 plus a negative 3 plus 7.1 plus 3 plus negative 7. So let's see, 2 plus minus 3 is going to be minus 1. This is going to be 10.1 minus 7. So this is going to be 10.1 minus 8 or 2.1. Okay, so this is just a function. Uh, it's usually abbreviated TR, and it just means take the diagonal entries and add them up. Um, so the first question is, is, why do you care? Why would you want to do this? And the rather unsatisfactory answer is that sometimes you do calculations and it pops up. Uh, and I'll give you an example of this. One place where it pops up is when this, be careful, this is a very special case. This only works for the 2x2 two two case. But if you have a 2x2 two two matrix, and I want to find the eigenvalues of this thing, first thing I need to do is get the characteristic polynomial. So let's focus on the characteristic polynomial for this thing. Take the determinant of g minus lambda. And since this is 2 by 2, we're going to have i2. So I'm going to have a minus lambda, b, c, d minus lambda. And now I take the determinant of this. So I multiply the diagonal entries, subtract the product of the off diagonals. Let's foil this thing out. So I get AD minus A lambda minus lambda D plus lambda squared minus BC. So let's see. So I've got lambda squared minus lambda A minus lambda D. So it's that one, that one, plus AD minus BC. Notice that's the determinant of the original matrix. And here I've got two terms with a lambda, so I can simplify that. So if I factor out the lambda, be careful, I'm factoring out a minus lambda, so this becomes a plus d. And I just said that's the determinant, so ad minus bc, that's the determinant of the original matrix. And now notice a plus d is the sum of those diagonal entries. So that's just the trace of the matrix. So my characteristic polynomial I've got this shortcut like so. And you're probably wondering, so what? This is not really all that useful because it's not going to help in terms of the calculations for a particular matrix. But if you have to program this or you have to look at a general case, and so for example, suppose you have a situation where you're looking at um, uh, 3R25, uh, and you need to figure out what's going to happen for different values of R, then working with this oops, working with this becomes very uh, much easier than um, working going through and working everything out and it's just a nice shortcut if you have to program this or look at this in a more general way so this is just a nice thing to have in your back pocket okay all right so in the case of a two by two matrix, and I can't emphasize enough, this is a special case, this does not generalize well, but the characteristic polynomial can be written like that. So let's look at a couple examples. So if I just want to know that, if I want to find the eigenvalues of this, my characteristic polynomial it's going to be lambda squared minus the trace is 7 plus 1. And now 
Now the determinant is 7 times 1 minus 3 times 8. This can be minus 8 lambda, and this is going to be what? 7 minus 24. Oops, this can be minus. Uh, what is that? 17? Is that correct? I believe that's right. Okay. Uh, I don't see a good way to factor that, so I'm just going to do a quadratic equation. So this is going to be minus a minus 8. And this is going to be minus 8 squared minus 4 times minus 17 all over 2. And I already did this in advance. I got 8 plus or minus square root of 132 over 2. And so there's my eigenvalues. So the first eigenvalue is 8 plus square root of 132 over 2. Second eigenvalue is 8 minus square root of 132 over 2. Let's do another example. Suppose I have this now. Oh, eigenvalue is great. Okay, so I've got to find the characteristic polynomial. So that's going to be lambda squared minus the trace. It's going to be what, 7 plus 1. It's 8 lambda. Uh, plus the determinant is going to be 7 times 1 minus 8 times minus 9. Yep. So this is going to be what I say was... So that comes out to be minus 17 when you... Uh, Nope, nope, sorry, I looked at the wrong place here. That comes out to be 79. Nope, it becomes a plus 79, sorry. Looking in the wrong place in my notes. Okay, so, oh great, I don't know how to factor that, whatever. So, this is going to be minus a minus 8. And I'm going to have minus 8 squared plus 4 times... 79 times 1, all over 2 times 1. And if I go through and work that out, I found before minus 252 over 2. So I get the first eigenvalue is going to be 8 plus the square root of negative 252 over 2. Lambda 2 is going to be 8 minus the square root of negative 252 over 2, and life is wonderful, except for that square root of a negative number, but we'll just get on with it. All right, thank you.